What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we started working on RF tools, and we got to the dimension inscriber. It's like, that's going to be easy. It's easy. No, no, it wasn't easy. In fact, it's quite difficult because we have to make this resonance cell frame. But a lot of the parts that go into this, we were able to auto craft. We had all the infrastructure set up. It was not that big of a deal. We had to make the recipes and just get those put in place. Uh, but we need to work on this cubic boron nitrate or nitrate. Yes. So this stuff here, cubic boron. So we need to get ourselves a pressurizer with hexagonal boron. Mm -hmm. So we need a pressurizer and we need this stuff. So the hexagonal boron comes from a crystallizer that has boron nitrate solution. So we need a crystallizer and this stuff. So the boron nitrate solution uh, comes from a fluid enricher or a chemical reactor. I think this is what we need to do. The chemical reactor that contains both ammonia and boric acid. Okay, so we need to get both of these materials put all the way over into this guy. So the boric acid comes from another chemical reactor with water and diborane. I'm probably seeing these wrong. And that comes from another chemical reactor full of hydrogen and molten boron. Okay, molten boron, we're probably going to do in a melter with the ore or the ingots. Either way, we'll make this stuff. So, yeah. Probably the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to start by putting a pressurizer somewhere with, um, what is, hold on a second, what does it need? Yeah, the pressurizer with the hexagonal nitrate as a recipe, and then we'll have, like, the hexagonal stuff put on auto craft. I think, is what we're going to want to do. So whenever we need one of these, it'll craft one of those and do this whole process. But like all of this other stuff before that point, yeah, I think that is going to just fill up the machines. Or maybe we'll make it so it makes this boron nitrate solution. How do we make that again? That is, yeah, this is going to be one of those things that's kind of like impossible. Like we just have to keep this stuff crafting all the time. So maybe I'll just be the cubic boron we'll set up with one hexagonal boron nitrate equals one of these. But anyway, we had a lot of machines that we're going to have to do. In fact, I probably should start crafting up recipes for these different machines because I'm sure we're going to need a bunch of them. So if I tell it how to make a pressurizer, a crystallizer, uh, and a chemical reactor, we should have quite a bit of this stuff ready to go. So when I'm down there hooking up more machines, I don't have to keep running back and forth, right? Uh, all right, so... If we search for nuclear craft and I look for these machines down here that I just made, of course, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, so we want to make ourselves a pressurizer. We are missing lithium ingots. Okay. Uh, we want to make a crystallizer. This guy, can we do that? We are missing lithium ingots. And I'm going to assume for the chemical reactor, it's going to be the same thing. Yes. Okay. So we need more lithium. Do we have lithium? We do have lithium ore. Okay. So the uses for this, I don't know. Do we just like grind it down and smelt it? Or what do we do? Lithium dust and then that gets smelted into the ingots. Okay. So that's simple auto craft. Let me go ahead and get that set up. And then we will start setting up the infrastructure to get ourselves this cubic boron nitrate. All right, guys, so I think I got this mostly figured out. It wasn't really that complicated once you start sitting down the machines and kind of putting signs on them so you know what machine is doing what. So, yeah, we're going to end up here with a pressurizer making the cubic boron nitride. I've been saying nitrate, which is wrong, nitride. Cubic boron nitride. Um, and that's going to be uh, from this machine here. It's going to make the hexagonal boron nitride. So we need to get ourselves an item conduit. I think that's the last thing that I'm missing here. So we need to extract always active and then insert. Yeah, because that's going to make an item. That's going to get pushed over into here. And this is going to complete the item. And then we need to do something with that. But anyway, uh, the hexagonal boron nitride gets it from the boron nitride solution, which is a combination of ammonia and boric acid. The boric acid is made from this diborane stuff which is a combination of hydrogen, which we're going to get, uh, I'll show you in a little bit, from our applied energistic system, and we're going to get molten boron. Yeah, so pretty much what we're going to say is one molten boron 
is, or I guess one boron ingot is going to equal one cubic boron nitride. I've done this before in another playthrough, maybe like Modern Sky Block 3 or something, and we had it set up so it was an auto craft, so we didn't have to like have all of this stuff completely full and wasting all sorts of resources just to make one item at a time or a full stack. Yeah, I think this is going to end up working pretty good. I'm pretty sure you put in one ingot down here, it melts it, and it does everything else, then you get one of the cubic boron out at the other end. Uh, and the ammonia over here, this is made from uh, hydrogen, which again, we'll show you in a moment. And then we also need to get nitrogen in there. That's the one step that we have not done here. So yeah, a combination of hydrogen, you can use mechanism or nuclear craft. We're gonna use nuclear craft stuff. And then nitrogen, which you can just get from a nitrogen collector. Yep. But the nitrogen collector does require beryllium ingots, which uh, we've made before, but it comes from uh, the beryllium dust, which we get from, was it the rock crusher on andesite? And if I remember correctly, this cost a whole lot of power way back when we first started to do this. So let's get ourselves a rock crusher and some andesite. Do we have some in here? Yeah, we have this stuff. We get a few stacks of it. All right, so now that we have literally all of the power, we come over here, this thing is nearly full. We have 610 girths of power. That's a whole lot of power. Let's just go ahead and throw this right. Oh, you know what? Where's our, hmm. I was gonna say we should put this right on the power, but that's not really what we should do. We should get ourselves a flux point. That should work right here. Put this guy down, give it some power. And we'll put this in here. So it's going to chew through a lot of power. 8,000 RF, which is actually not that much anymore for us. 8,000 RF to do this. But we can start putting in the uh, speed upgrades. Yeah, we have lots of power available. Uh, this also is going to want the other ones, the energy upgrades. Let's see. This is the nuclear craft one. We have 16. Let's make 16 of these. Otherwise, it's just going to cost a ridiculous ridiculous amount of power without them okay so we'll put the energy upgrades in here now these only work for so like 16 of those is only going to work if we have 16 of these and we put one speed upgrade in there only one of those is going to take effect so we put one of those in there and we're doing 16,000 rf per tick two of those we're doing 24 if i put in all of these we're using 136,000 rf per tick but we're doing 17 times multiplier so beryllium, we're able to get quite quickly now. Um, yeah, but that's drawing a stupid amount of power. If we come over here and look at our statistics, it doesn't even look like we're touching anything, though. We're still, we're outputting just slightly more than what we're making is what we're doing at this point. So we could continue to add in more of these things if we wanted to. More of the speed upgrades and more of the energy upgrades and just like, I, I don't know if we'd be able to get this instant, but we would be able to do some good stuff here. We could click it with this time in a bottle possibly oh yeah we're able to do that how much power are we using here Four hundred and eight thousand. that's pretty good i like it yeah so beryllium we no longer have a problem with we are able to collect this stuff quite quickly i'm gonna click that a few more times get a little crazy here 1.2 million rf per tick Woo! look at that it's nearly instant i like it <laughs> all right so yes we have plenty of this stuff now we just need to smelt that down and then we can make ourselves our what is it the nitrogen collector i think is what we're trying to make so let's go ahead and break that that's i mean i guess we could set up an automation for that so we could say hey we want to get beryllium that way but since it's random i don't like setting up automations for that anyway put that flux point away so we wanted the beryllium stuff let's get two stacks of them we'll smelt that down should smell quite quickly Awesome. All right. So we want to make ourselves a nitrogen collector. So that required the beryllium plus the advanced plating and some buckets. So we need this recipe here. I might go to the compact variant that requires a bronze ingot and eight of those. And if we want to do the dense one, yeah, that's going to be like 64 plus a gold ingot. You know, maybe we'll see if we can do that. It's probably way overkill. But at this point in the game, why not do way overkill, right? All right, so dense nitrogen collector. If we wanted to do that, can we? It looks like we can. We're just gonna go ahead and do it. 
All right, so about three minutes later, we got ourselves a dense nitrogen collector. Yep, that produces 640 millibuckets per tick of nitrogen. Do we need that? Probably not. <laughs> but like I said, we might as well just craft it anyway. Why not? So over here, yeah, the ammonia needed the nitrogen, so we can just set this behind it, and that should just, like, fill it up. Yep, we got 16 buckets of the stuff, and this is filling itself up, and it'll just push that out into this whenever we need it, so not a big deal. Uh, the other thing we can do here... Oh, uh, actually, I guess there's two things. We need to power all these machines. So I do need another uh, point, another flux point. We need to put that somewhere. Let's put it maybe down here. That should be fine. Let's place that right there. That'll power this machine and power all these other ones through the conduit. Okay, so we have that done. Uh, I did want to put down the conduit facades. These are just to cover up the power cables that we have underneath. Like so, and all done. Awesome. All right, so that looks that looks a lot nicer than it was before. We do have to hook up the applied energistics, and then we also need to get ourselves the um, the hydrogen. So that is the nuclear craft hydrogen. Can we get ourselves like a dropper? I think we should be able to use this for uh, setting the fluid. So if we come over here, so on our portable tank here, I did go ahead and enchant these with holding four. So both of these now hold 2,400 buckets up from 800, I think is what it was before. Anyway, if I right click on that, we should have hydrogen stored in here. Okay, so if I come over to this and I set this here, so yep, it knows about hydrogen and this one should know about hydrogen as well. But nothing's going to happen until we hook up the applied energistics. So currently we're using two channel or three channels. Do we have three channels available? Where is all of this connected to? That's connected over here. We only have one channel available. Okay, so we can do some things to rearrange this. How many are we using down here? Just one channel. Where does that cable go? Just down to here? Hmm. Well, we could make it, this dense cable run further. That would be another way of doing it. In fact, that might be the best way of doing this particular thing. So let's get a dense smart cable. We'll disconnect all this stuff for now. And just break this all the way along here. This will allow us to run way more channels down this way. That should be far enough, actually. There we go. All right, so all of that should initialize here. and We should see how many channels are available. There should be plenty because we're definitely not using 32 channels through this thing. Uh, we're using a total of eight channels. So, yes, we have plenty of channels available off of this wire here. In fact, I'll replace this one with uh, this dense one so we can see how many channels are available down this path. And we can just tell there's only one being used down there, but just so we can see. Okay, so now that we have that done, we should be able to take this and run this all the way. Oops. If I click at the right blocks, we should be able to run this all the way down here just like so. All right. And then our machine should fill up with the hydrogen, I do believe. We got two of them here that should be filling up. That one's got nitrogen and maybe this isn't going to work. <laughs> Does it show that we're using the channels? It just says one of eight channels still, so maybe those have not initialized yet. I did connect everything, right? So why is that not saying we are using four of eight channels? So I figured something was wrong with our applied energistics. Um, this pack does have AE2 stuff, and if you've never seen this network visualization tool, visualization tool, this is a nice item. So you, when you first craft it, you have to click somewhere on your network and then it will assign itself to that network and you can get kind of overwhelmed with what's going on here. There's a lot of colors, a lot of lines, all sorts of craziness happening. But what's kind of cool about it, like P2P tunnels, it'll put this purple line going to where it's connected over there. You can do a shift scroll on this and just show P2P connections. So this one is the one that's furthest this way, so it's easy for us to tell where that one is. So yeah, we just follow this line all the way over here, and we can see that that one is connected. Actually, all of those are connected to this one P2P tunnel. 
If we look at this, we can see that we have 32 channels in use. So yes, we have a problem here. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't want to make this thing, you can just come over. Let's uh, unselect that and just look at this. And it says frequency 6472 on the tooltip. So you can come over to where all your P2Ps are and just kind of have a look. And of course, it says frequency 6472 right here. So what we need to do is split this P2P up. Mm -hmm. So we need to get ourselves a memory card. I'll grab this one here and I'm going to take this one, do a shift right click to copy that particular card, the ID, and then we will load that over here. So that'll free up channels from our other one and we should have everything connect to this one. We should be able to see things happen here with the network visualization tool, I do believe. I don't know why it's not showing the other P2Ps. There we go. Yep. So anyway, we can see that that one is now connecting to, should be its own separate one. Yeah, that one's going all the way over there on its own separate thing. We have 11 channels in use, so everything should be working here. And if that is correct, we should have hydrogen in these machines now. But yeah, we have hydrogen. Yeah, that is slowly filling up and hydrogen here. Okay, so of course we're gonna wanna get ourselves some acceleration cards. I think we can put four in each one. So we'll make eight acceleration cards. So we just gotta wait for the pure crystals to get formed. And that should be very quick for the rest of this stuff actually. Oh, it has to do the printed calculation circuits. So it's gonna take just slightly longer, but now we're done, awesome. All right, so we'll put those guys into here and those guys into here. And if we look at the hydrogen here, that's full. And this one should be full as well. Cool. So now we are making ammonia and that is being exported from here and over into this machine, this chemical reactor. So yeah, we are making ammonia and that's filling that up very nicely. Okay. So all of that should be good to go. So the only thing that we're needing here is the molten boron, which we have not set up a recipe for. Um, so pretty much what we need to do is say that one boron is going to equal one hexagonal, or I'm sorry, the cubic boron nitride, nitride, nitride. All right, so let's try and get that recipe done here. So if we come up here, we can do a processing pattern, and we want to say a cubic boron nitride. So we'll click this plus button, but we're not going to do a hexagonal. We're going to remove that. We're going to say that a boron ingot is going to make that, which doesn't make sense according to all the recipes here, but according to our processing, it should work this way, hopefully, if uh, I remember correctly, but I'm pretty sure one ingot will make us one of those things down at the end. So if we tell the system to make a cubic boron nitride, everything should process and we should end up with one over here. I guess we want to complete that pattern, so we will want a import bus. And then we're gonna need some more of the keybling, which we have. So we'll just do this. And yeah, we'll just bring that up here. And that should complete the recipe, I do believe. It does not have to go back into the interface, which I normally do. I think just an import bus will complete that the same way. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So we wanna make the, I already forgot what it's called, cubic. So if we tell it to make a cubic, it says one boron equals one cubic. So let's see if this happens. So we put that into the melter that comes over here into the re chemical reactor that make the diboride and that comes over to here. Oh, uh, boric acid. What else are we missing here? I think that requires water. Uh, is that what it required? Was it water? Yeah, it's just water. Okay, so we can just get ourselves a infinite water supply and just put that right here. That should work just fine. I think it required three buckets, so there we go. There's the boric acid that's over here in this chemical reactor doing a thing. We come over here, there's a boron nitride solution. So that makes this guy and that should come over here. And there we go, cubic boron that gets inserted into the network and recipe complete. Awesome. So now we can make cubic boron nitride simply 
by requesting one from our applied energistic system. Now, obviously we can make this better by putting in the speed upgrades and all sorts of things like that. I'll probably just go ahead and do that off camera and get everything all sped up. All right, guys, so we put in 16 speed upgrades, 16 energy upgrades into each one of these machines and everything goes really, really fast now. So if I tell it to make the cubic boron nitrate, we actually make two of them per craft. So there's one, there's two. Oh, uh, you know what? It goes a little bit slower than I thought it was. I thought it was almost instant because I did that before and I checked and by the time I checked, it was already in the system. So it goes faster than what I thought it should, but Anyway, we get two of them per craft, so I probably want to change this recipe to see that's going to make two cubic boron nitrides. Uh, but one thing I did notice, though, uh, you notice that there is a uh, fluid trash can here. Yeah, the boron nitride solution makes, I think, water as a byproduct. So I'm extracting water from the secondary tank here, and we're just deleting that. That doesn't matter. And then the boric acid here... We'll make a little bit extra hydrogen, yeah, from the uh, diborine that we put in there. So I'm just throwing that away. Now, it is kind of interesting, though. If we take a look at, um, let's take a look at this diborine, this stuff. If we look at the uses for it, um, well, actually, I guess the recipe, to make the diborine, we need one ingot of boron plus three buckets of hydrogen, right? So if we look at the uses for this... In the chemical reactor, we put half a bucket of that with some water, we get a bucket of boric acid, and we get three buckets of hydrogen. So pretty much we end up with six buckets of hydrogen extra from this process. So we could reuse that and not use applied energistics to provide hydrogen, but honestly, I, I just feel like that's just way too much work to try and figure it all out. So uh, we're just pulling from our nearly infinite supply of hydrogen, and we're just deleting the extras over here and being wasteful about it. But it doesn't really matter. Just something that I thought I'd bring up because I did see that there were extra items in the chemical reactors over there. And we definitely needed to get those figured out. So now that we have all that done, the only thing we're left with to make the resonance cell frame full is pulsating mesh. Which means we need pulsating propolis. Which means we need to get ourselves... Mysterious combs through a centrifuge. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do bees. Uh, we're not going to do any bee breeding, but we do have to go get ourselves these bees, set them up in an apiary, and then automate that. Yep, not so difficult. Uh, do we even have any bees in here? We do have ender drones, and that is what we needed, but we don't have any princesses, so we can't do anything. So we need to get ourselves a scoop. We have two of them. Apparently, I have broken one hive at some point. Probably get rid of a Meadows Princess or something. Um, and then we need to put those into an apiary, not a bee house. Apiary. Have we made those before? And what options do we have? We do have the industrial version. That might be useful. Be receptacle. That's not expensive. Okay. Well, just looking at options here. Uh, if we do industry stuff. I can spell it right. Uh, we should have options here to nullify out the uh, end effect, I think, possibly. Uh, if nothing else, we can speed up like the production rate by putting in eight of the production speed upgrades. I'm trying to figure out which one those are. So life expectancy, we don't want that. Where is the production upgrades? Is that even a thing? Am I blind? I might be blind. I don't see... Humidifier, pollen, seal, wasn't it like a, oh, it's this one right here, production upgrade. Yes, so we can put in eight of those, but we don't have royal jelly. Yeah, actually, I guess we won't be able to do any of that speed up action because we haven't done any bees, and it's not worth doing that, in my opinion. Okay, so we need to go to the end, and I don't have a fast way there. Uh, we could finally set up warps there. That might be something to do. What we're... Uh, what are these things called over here? I set one up for the moon. This is a dislocator. Yeah, okay. So we should, oh, yeah, I guess I can craft it here. We should be able to do this. We need eye of ender, two of them. Well, I guess technically we only need one since we can warp back from the end whenever we want to. 
So we have a thing. We just need to set it there, and then I need to make a pedestal, which means I need to make a stone pressure plate. Cool. So I will go to the end. We will link that, and then we'll set it down over here. And then whenever we want to go there, all we got to do is just right-click that little fella. Okay, well, I'm going to fly to the end. Cool. So here we are in the end. I set our dislocator here just right in the center, right where we spawn in, looking forward. So we have that available. We can just right out, click on that. And we'll end up right on this platform from the base or whatever. Uh, so now we need to go find these guys. Yeah, the end hives. Okay, so we just take our thing. We mine it. They don't like us mining it, but it's fine. They'll deal with it. Uh, so there's our ender princess and an ender drone. Uh, we do get a mysterious comb for our efforts. And if we go find enough of these, we might not even have to set up any of the bee breeding stuff. Uh, but trying to find these hives isn't always easy. There we go. I wonder if I put that like in my offhand and I put a pickaxe in my other hand, does that go faster because of the efficiency? Maybe. Maybe that goes faster. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, we just need to do this a few times. Yeah, that does seem to go faster. Uh, we need to do this a few times. So we need one pulsating mesh, which means we need at least five of these mysterious combs. We get 100% chance of that. And we have four of them. So we are almost done for right now, unless we need to make a whole bunch of these for later. And there is five of them. Well, I tell you what, I will go around the end real quick, see if I can find any more of these hives, try and get as much of them from this main island. You can always go out to the other islands further out and find more of them that way. But yeah, let me go and collect all the ones from this island and we'll continue on. All right, guys, so we got ourselves a centrifugal separator. I don't think we're going to automate this unless we absolutely need to. I think this is going to be like a one-time use, but I went ahead and made a resonant conversion kit for it. And we have a bunch of these augments all ready to go. And then we just need to give it a little bit of power. So we'll get ourselves a point, a flux point to put on this thing like so. So you can use either the forestry uh, centrifuge. Yep, that's rather inexpensive. We were able to make that real quick. Or you can upgrade it to the centrifugal separator from thermal expansion. And it does require a centrifuge in the recipe in this mod pack. So that's what we did. Okay, so if we put this in here very fast so there's our pulsating propolis and then we get some honey drops as well uh so to make this guy the pulsating mesh yep we just need to be in this thing like so and there we go there's one pulsating mesh and we can make another one because i did collect a total of 10 of those propolis or i guess the combs here so let's get rid of all of this stuff so the last step is we just need to put all of these items over here and then we should be able to make uh, ourselves a resonant cell frame full. Uh, the other thing is we didn't make the resonant cell frame either, which I don't know. We've been so focused on doing this other thing. Yeah, we don't have a recipe for this guy. So that's mana dust, hardened enderium glass, signalum frame full, and ender casing. Actually, yeah, all of this stuff in the signalum frame. Do we have this? We do have the signal and frame full, uh, except we're missing a little bit of rubber still for that, but we can auto craft this thing. Okay, so I guess we could uh, upgrade that one more time to this recipe. Let me go ahead and get that rubber sorted. I'll just go farm some rubber and then we'll make a recipe for uh, the resonant cell frame empty in the advanced thermionic fabricator. Yeah, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I said I had to set up a recipe over here to make the empowered diamantine blocks because we needed these crystals in order to make something. Was the ender casing? Yeah, the ender casing. So we have that set up on AutoCraft that's making the block, and we have a recipe to convert the block into these guys. I think everything should be now set up, so we should be able to make the resonant cell frame empty. Let's see if we can do that. Like, see if this AutoCraft works. Like, everything shows up here just fine. Yep, and it shows... Where was the other craft here? Uh, some of these parts right here, like mana diamonds and stuff, are used for making the empowered diamond block. 
Anyway, so let's start that up. I didn't try this. Yeah, there is obviously a problem here. Uh, how did that fail, actually? Did I not set the blacklist properly on this guy? If we look in here, the priority. Oh, I put the empowered one on blacklist instead of this one on blacklist. Whoops. Okay, so that's my mistake here. Uh, I just need to move that over. That should work next time. So grab that one and stick that on here. Okay, so that completes, that completes. Other stuff sounds like it's happening. Uh, what are we doing here? It looks like everything should be good. It is making a whole bunch of lumium ingots for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but we are making a bunch of those. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really show what we're doing with that though. Okay, and there we go. There's a resonance cell frame full. Yeah, the other thing that I did was just put this recipe. Oh, I had to make a recipe for the hardened endurium glass. So that's regular hardened glass plus an endurium blend in the induction smelter. So I did make a recipe for that, and then I made the recipe for this in our advanced thermionic fabricator. Cool. So now that we are able to craft this guy, we should go through and grab all the parts for making the resonance cell frame full, and then we can craft this. All right, guys, so those are all the parts that we spent the last couple episodes trying to make. And then if we put a resident, resident cell frame empty right there, nothing happens. Whoops. There we go. And now things are happening. And there we go. There's a resident cell frame full. Oh my goodness, that feels pretty good being able to craft that thing. Even though we can't really auto craft it, there might be ways that we could probably do that. I don't know, but in our current setup with applied energistics the way it is, we cannot do that. So now we have the resonant cell frame full, so we should be able to get the rest of this stuff set up here. Let's see if we can do that. We only have that. So an empty dimension tab. Block of black iron crystalline trimmed. Have we made the crystalline crystal tine? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I guess there is more to this than what I originally thought. Um, these machine bases, those aren't that bad. That's just copper plates, right? Uh, and then also it wants us to make a draconic core, which we haven't done yet, but we should be able to. Next time, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Man, I thought we were going to be able to just knock out all this RF tool stuff, like, really fast. And now we're entering into the third episode. Well, the <laughs> next one would be the third episode of trying to get this stuff done. But that's fine, because we'll be making the Dimension Scriber, and we will be making dimensions of our own. And we should be able to do some pretty cheaty things, unless all of the cheaty things have been disabled in Spot Pack, which is possible. I don't think so with how expensive that particular block is. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.